ethical enterprise. You know, these are the people who really appreci appreciate the insights of, of the peer-to-peer -peer movement. They, they are very, very hungry and very enthusiastic uh, to hear uh, what, I have, you know, what I say about, about these things. And, and very often what I get is, well, that's exactly what we're doing. You know, but we didn't have the words for it, right? So this is an important role that we that we have is we we bring them concepts that for things that they may already be doing, but you know, not fully integrated, not fully conscious, and we we bring this as an added value to them is a vision that they're not alone, that this is a global worldwide movement to change this functional system. The. Uh the, the situation, say, in Spain is really difficult, and, and Greece especially. They're injecting major funds into the banks to keep those afloat. And uh, the kind of system that you're describing would essentially, well, from at least from this view, now I don't know what it's going to look like in the future, but it would almost be essentially a kind of biodiversity. It would be a diversity in the economy that would, uh, would prevent that kind of disruption. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know, instead of having one centralized debt-created money, right, which really puts the state in the perpetual uh, dependency on the banks uh, and the financial system, uh, you could you could imagine, for example, a distribution of currencies. You you'd still have a national currency. You can even have a global currency, continental currency, but you also would have, you know, local peer-to-peer -peer currencies and virtual peer-to-peer -peer currencies, it's like Bitcoin. Um, at the P2P Foundation, we, we actually um, use Bitcoin, a certain percentage of our income is paid in Bitcoin, not because we, we believe it's a perfect financial um, system, but because it's the first globally scalable post-Westphalian currency that is produced in a peer-to-peer -peer way and that's being produced not by the state, not by the banks, but through the trust of a community in this protocol, uh, the Bitcoin protocol. Um, so the way to imagine it is you know, to see distributed infrastructures emerging in every field of activity. So we have distributed financing, we have peer-to-peer -peer currencies, social lending, and crowdfunding. We have distributed machinery, 3D printing, CNC milling. Um, you have distributed enterprise, you know, new company formats, you have new metrics. So this is like a, a puzzle being built by different people in different places in the world. And what we're trying to show people is th this puzzle actually fits together. It's going somewhere. At the end of the year, of course, the, you have this summer, you'll be in Chiang Mai. In fact, I'll see you there. Uh, at the end of the year, you're going to go to Brazil. Now, this is uh, Brazil's a pretty hot place right now for... The economy is growing at, uh, I think, 7 or 8%, uh, massive investment from the state and so on. Uh, quite different than what you're seeing in Europe. What are you expecting once you get to Brazil? Well, okay, one of the differences is that uh, young people are in the majority in countries like Brazil. So, uh, unlike Europe, where, you know, we're aging very fast and the majority of the people are, are actually, you know, I'm not sure, over 45 or... But, you know, the, the, the old people dominate the system and the young people are not numerous enough to, to really... Uh, so, the European young people exist as some kind of like outside world, you know, they, they can get through to the elite. Uh, in Brazil, it's, it's quite different. I, I witnessed a conference where, you know, young people were actually denouncing the Minister of Culture, but when the conference was finished they went they talked to each other and out of that discussion something came out right and this is really hard to imagine in Europe so because Brazil is relatively you know less less far ahead on the path of the same time of development they can still fork their development right and so I would consider Brazil probably the most peer-to-peer -peer country in the world I gave a lecture in a favela school. Now, all these young people knew about my work. It's amazing. Uh, you know, I didn't, and these are, I mean, not the kind of public that I that I expected 
to know what I was working on. Uh, so for them, it's something very important. And there's a there's a musical network called Fora do Exo, Out of the Axis, which is musicians from the northeast, the poorest state in Brazil. They mutualize their their infrastructure, the studio and the instruments. They use an internal peer-to-peer -peer currency to manage their exchanges, and then they organize these festivals, with, which brings in the money for the whole network, right? I mean, this is a peer-to-peer -peer economy. It works exactly like the open source economy. And, you know, it works and it's pretty huge over there. So then, and they have several things like that. Um, so this is quite, uh, yeah, quite enthusing for me to go in, in the, these type of countries. Yeah, it looks like it's, uh, it's taken off. It's really uh, fascinating yeah. and, and it's inspiring uh, people. It's, it's inspiring their imaginations and it's inspiring yeah. them to get involved in, in the economy. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, thank you very much uh, for your time mm -hmm. and look forward to seeing you in Chiang Mai this summer. All right. Thank you.